Hey everybody, Defender here, and welcome to another video on Diablo 4. Hope you're all having a wonderful day wherever you are. So, the early access content is just about to wrap up for us. The first weekend for pre-order access and uh, granted access from Blizzard. And I've been playing through all the three characters, finished off the maximum level, explored the end game stuff that we've gotten access to so far. And I figured it would be a great opportunity to make a leveling guide, if you will, for all classes, kind of a broad approach to how you can easily achieve level 25 in the open beta next weekend, if you haven't already played the game, and some tips and tricks to get there quicker, maybe on the newer classes as well, if you've already played the, the current ones. So stick around and we'll dive into my top five tips for easily leveling up as quick as you can on all the classes. So firstly, the easiest one, and that is that when you start a new character, you're going to be given an option for the world tier that you want to choose when you start the game. Everything starts on Adventurer, which is world tier one. And at the moment, we have access to the, the, the first two world tiers, Adventurer and Veteran in the beta. And also the other ones will be required to be level 50 plus. So it wouldn't make sense anyway to have access to them. So off the bat, Adventurer is really for someone who's never played an ARPG before. If you have any experience in even just uh, an isometric game or another ARPG or an MMO in general, you can probably just go straight to Veteran. Now this is going to be by far and away much quicker experience for you. It is a large net gain in leveling overall, uh, even if you find yourself maybe dying once or twice in the complete playthrough up to 25. Um, it is going to be much quicker for you because mob density is just going to prove that you gain so much more experience across the board obviously there will be many different builds you can play in this game there's a lot of diversity and as you go you might want to change things along the way so early on in the game you're not penalized really for respecking so make sure that you try a combination of basic skills which are your first ones and then your core skills which tend to be kind of like the spenders um, or um, or your bigger damaging ones of the two so you kind of have the basic ones which generate or are free to cast and then you have the the the, uh, the core ones which are either spenders or they're kind of like the big ones that do the bigger damage to begin with. So make sure you try out combinations. Um, I will make a build for each one of the three classes that I've played and I'll put them up in a separate video. But for now, just know that you can easily respec and uh, you kind of want to find kind of a, a theme, if you will, when playing. So maybe here we want to talk about with a barbarian, we'll go for vulnerable. Uh, where do the, the bleeding with vulnerable and then maybe go for rend which does bleeding again and then you can do like increased damage against vulnerable so they pair really well together because this is doing vulnerable and bleeding and this does bleeding and more damage to vulnerable so the kind of there's kind of a theme going on between a lot of the the options that you can choose uh, so make sure you kind of try around with all the different ones obviously some will feel better than others to you number three so very early on when you're playing, you're gonna arrive in uh, Kjovashad, which is the main kind of hub town of the game. So you're gonna start somewhere around here and you're gonna eventually get to Kjovashad, which is the main one. And once you get there, you want to immediately head to the Alchemist. Now the Alchemist has multiple benefits, but firstly, the biggest thing for you is going to be looking to craft an elixir. Now an elixir is basically a, a 30 minute buff that you drink and it's going to give you uh, a kind of a specific benefit and also increased experience 5%. Now these are fantastic to help level up much quicker obviously as you can tell. The cheapest one to craft is going to be the iron barb one which is going to give you thorns which again is also really helpful which means every time someone attacks you they take damage back and it's also going to increase your armor so earlier on it's a really really helpful survivability thing but also the five percent experience is is a must and as you can see it's very cheap and easily affordable to craft all you have to do is just kind of as you go just collect um, the herbs and the iron and stuff as you play and any any kind of the of the resources that drop from mobs just collect as you go and you should easily have enough to craft a couple of these and just activate them when you go into dungeons and um finish like the, this, the final steps of, of of quests and stuff and uh yeah you'll definitely level up much much quicker okay number four this one is probably one of the more important ones and that is as you play you're going to be constantly getting drops of, of armor, uh, weapons, jewelry, um, of all different rarities, so different colors, right? So you're going to have your commons, your own commons, your rares, um, all the way up to, to legendaries. I don't think there's any uniques in the beta. But essentially, as you level, every level, just look through all your gear and you want to be looking for anything that has generally a green plus on its, its damage or its value uh, that's the main value for that item. So this is going to be an increase for that character. 
Um, even if it's a small one, normally it is the best option for you to take. Now we'll talk about the other kind of stats down below it afterwards, but for now just know that you want to always equip stuff with the green on it because it's going to make you stronger or, um, or more tanky or you'll do more damage uh, across the board. So just generally speaking, you want to equip stuff with a plus. Obviously, if you go, on, go to a vendor as well and see it, it might be worth it if it's affordable, but most of the time they're not going to be very good. As you can see, there's a lot of negative reds here and they're not worth equipping. So just just equip the greens that you get that drop. You don't need to invest in anything that's expensive or, or pay for anything at all as you play because you're you're going to be constantly replacing stuff every level. So don't worry about that too much. Just equip stuff that drops. Okay, and so number five, this one's quite an important one that you'll you'll realize as you start playing, but it's not important earlier on, is that as you get legendary drops, they're going to have uh, imprints on them, or, or perks, if you will. And essentially what that means is they're going to give you a unique uh, benefit to them. So there are some that have really, really great ones and really interesting ones, and some that don't have ones that are that good at all. But some of them are worth building around. Uh, there can be some really cool ones like in the Sorceress, she can have an extra Hydra that she summons so doubles the effectiveness of the Hydra cast. As you can see here I have a Rapid Fire one so maybe I would want to, to build Rapid Fire uh, around around this Legendary. Um, and they can really change the, the effectiveness of a build or a skill. So make sure that if you get Legendaries that you you look at their, their skills, their, their perks and uh, build around that. Uh, it can be really, really uh, a, a unique way of, of playing the class compared to what you were doing before, and it also can be a huge power spike as well to play around. Not only that, there are also some other really, really good stats to look at on your gear as you're playing, and you might realize that uh, actually your class's benefit is from distance, right? So damage to distant enemies is a huge one for you if you're playing the ranged version of the rogue, or maybe you're playing the barbarian and you realize that you often are slowing enemies and you're building slow damage and you have a lot of slow damage uh, items. And that, that way you would want to go back into your skills and look for skills that do slowed. Uh, there's actually some perks in the tree that make you uh, slow enemies when you're doing certain skills. And then as a result, they take more damage. And obviously if you have bonus damage in your slowed uh, items, then you're going to do even more damage on top of that. So you just look for items that, that tell you um, kind of the stats that you're looking for. If it's, if it's range damage, slow damage, bleed damage, burning damage, and you can start to make builds around those because they power spike you massively. So it all depends on the drops you get. And then Later on, you can look at imprinting from other legendaries, but it's such a later stage that it's not worth looking at at the moment. Uh, just look for the stats that you get and try and build around those as well because it can really change the way the build works. All right, then lastly, let's talk about the general leveling kind of priority as you play. Um, so the first off, I would say to follow the, the main story as you're playing. Now, obviously, we don't have a lot of the campaign unlocked to us, but as you play in a follow a, uh, a route that actually makes sense to explore the map as you go, and uh, it's always going to be the best option to go and do the campaign first. Now, the main story, I believe, ends somewhere around like level 15 to 20 if you've kind of just focused on that and nothing else. So it's already a decent part of the leveling experience from the beta and it's going to get you to level 20 ish which is what you need for a lot of the unlocks and to be able to do pretty much all the content in the game outside of maybe the the world boss and one of the strongholds might be a little bit difficult for you but generally speaking everything will be everything else will be doable so follow the main story okay and as you play make sure that you're grabbing the the waypoints on all the different areas because they are the only way that you can get back to those regions without walking on foot which is a pain. So make sure that you grab these waypoints as you go. They are free to go to uh, once you unlock them. So then it's a very, very quick means to, to travel. Also, as you play, you're going to have these side quests that pop up, the, just these exclamation marks. And they're also going to give you very easily trackable quests that probably have you going into dungeons or exploring other parts of the regions. Um, and they're always worth grabbing. If they're along the way to the main quests, it's it's definitely worth doing them as well because they give you a decent spike of experience and sometimes some pretty good drops. And also they are uh, prerequisites to other side quests. Okay, so they can kind of chain on to the next one and it can be really valuable to make sure you do them. So grab them. Don't go out of your way to do them until after you've done the story quest. But if they're on the way, definitely do them. 
Okay, and then also we have all these side dungeons. There are plenty of side dungeons, and I haven't even explored all the map. There are little bits of the map left to do still on this character. But um, there are plenty of side side dungeons, and they obviously have some extra benefits to them for doing them. Uh, and they can also be linked to the side quests, and they give great drops. They're very dense in, in mobs, and they can have a lot of bosses, so they're really worth doing for experience. Um, so make sure after you've done the story and you're doing the side quests, jump into the side dungeons as well. They can be a little bit tough, so make sure that you do have, you know, six skills um, ready on your hotbar. Uh, so you have all six unlocked here and that you kind of spec into skills that make sense or ones that you're comfortable running. Um, if they're a bit hard, don't worry, you can back out and, and come back to them anytime. They are optional content, so just kind of build around different things and see, see what works best for you and go back in when you are more comfortable. And then also there are strongholds in the game, so there are three strongholds in this game at the moment they do have level requirements and they are kind of the hardest content in the beta outside of the, the world boss and they will be slightly higher than you no matter what level you are uh, but they give really good drops and they work towards the renowned which is fantastic to, to get focused on because it will give you bonus skill points uh, bonus gold um, bonus experience and it's just generally speaking one of the things you need to learn to focus on uh, for the launch of the game as well so have a look at renowned as well because it will help you make a stronger build because generally speaking that is the best kind of way to do it uh, so go story uh, grab the waypoints do side quests along the way and then afterwards start to clear up all the side quests the side dungeons um, and then kind of just just kind of play around with the builds and work on the the strongholds and then also just a few other tips like um, for example you can put down a uh, waypoint so that you know where you're going there's lots of obviously winding paths that you won't always know the best way to go to somewhere and also there could be some dead ends on the map when you haven't explored but let's just say i wanted to go over here i haven't even explored this area but it's already going to tell me the best way to get get there uh, without going through kind of some dead ends that I haven't explored yet um, because obviously the, the map is very windy and maze-like so yes, that's also really good and generally speaking try and spec into some kind of mobility skill because it will help traverse uh, traverse through the map as you're playing and also you don't want to get stuck um, in corners with mobs and stuff because that will will help massively so there we have it guys that is my top kind of five six if you will uh leveling guide tips uh it's been really really crucial for me getting to to level 25 on all the characters very quickly during this weekend i've got plenty of time left before the end of this closed beta the early access beta whatever you want to call it uh to play around with these characters and then start farming legendaries and stuff it hasn't taken me that long um maybe a few hours per character focused just going through the priority i've said um so really uh with the, with the open at, uh open beta you can definitely get a few characters done without any problem try out the necromancer and the druid as well if you want to they're going to be really really fun um so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below what kind of stuff were you following when you were leveling up uh these were definitely the best things for me but maybe i've missed a few things that are really obvious you know um like maybe some of the public events there are definitely events as you run around and they can be worth jumping into as well um especially if you make the the mastery bonus on top of it so there are some things I've, I've definitely missed out but make sure um that if if i've missed anything you let me know in the comments down below let me know what you guys think of this video did it cover the things you wanted to know and also i will be putting up a guide for each of the classes with their builds uh the best way to level up quickly with a really really strong build that helps clear lots of aoe uh, for mob density and also the bosses as well so you can, you can definitely clear but yeah that's everything for today's video guys thank you so much as always for your support i appreciate you guys so much and i hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are make sure that you uh, like comment and subscribe if you're new to the channel uh, and you enjoy the content and hopefully i'll see you in the next video have a great day take care